So here we are again. You know, the last time I talked about the Oasis, I thought this will be the last we speak of the Kindle, at least until the inevitable release of the Kindle Color, right? Well, so many of you white knights love to make comments in that Oasis video about how, uh, how dare you, sir, how dare you get a new Kindle Oasis for yourself and give your wife your leftover pathetic paper white. Well, the, the whole thing about that was that she didn't want a Kindle Oasis. She wanted a Paperwhite, but she did become quite jealous of the processing speed on the Kindle Oasis. So, being the nice guy I am, all you white knights will be happy to know that I did go ahead and pick her up the brand new Kindle Paperwhite, which is supposed to be every bit as awesome as the Kindle Oasis, just in a smaller, slim little package. So, what we're going to do, guys, like usual, is we're going to kind of open it up now take a look at some of the uh i guess some of the cosmetic differences and then i'll use it and then we'll talk about it like we usually do now with this guys i really hadn't planned to do this at all uh, especially not on the channel even if i upgrade this for i wasn't planning on talking about it on the channel but guys i've gotten so many messages emails instagram messages facebook messages you name it about people wanting to know if i think that they should buy the brand new kindle because apparently I have become like somewhat of a uh, booktube authority on the Kindle. And hey, I appreciate that. But uh, looking at it right away, I can tell that it is, that this is her, the original Paperwhite, or my original Paperwhite that I gave to her. And you guys, you know, you know the story. So it is a little bigger. If you can tell there, it is just a little bit bigger. Obviously, next to the Kindle Oasis, it's not going to be quite the same. It's a different shape, different size, obviously. But I can tell right away it is a much different shape. But uh, again, I love that it doesn't have that little bump on the back. It's very easy to hold. Uh, I like this because it looks like it can still fit in your pocket. Now, she did get a case for it, and she was very explicit with uh, with this. When you open it, don't you drop it. You know, make sure you put it directly into the case. She got the same case that she did la that uh, that I got last time. It is obviously just a different size. You know why they put the do not eat thing on these? I mean, who's, who sees that? It's like, man, I got to have a snack. Anyway, uh, so we're going to put it straight into the case here. I will link the case, obviously, below if that's the one that you would like to get. It is just a fabric material. It, uh, it doesn't it doesn't shed or anything like that. It doesn't really chafe or whatnot. But again, a nice clean little package there. Maybe now you can get a better sense of the idea of the difference in the size there due to the uh, the difference in color. See. So, like I said, guys, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to power it on. I'm going to kind of use both of them at the same time. I'm going to compare it with the Kindle Oasis as well, and I'm going to let you guys know: should you upgrade from the regular Paperwhite? to the brand new, I guess was a fifth or sixth generation Paperwhite? I guess I should have known that before I pressed record, right? Anyway, we're gonna do that now, and when we come back, I'll talk about all the differences, and if I think that you should upgrade. Hey, what's up, bookworms and Bezos bubs? You like that? Mike back to talk some more Kindle once again, guys, because there is a new Kindle that's out. This, of course, is the brand new 2021 Kindle Paperwhite. This is a fifth edition Paperwhite, 11th generation overall. That's why the confusion with the introduction here. But uh, this one is something that I didn't think I was going to be talking about because I got my Oasis last year and my wife got the old Paperwhite and thought, hey, there's no need to upgrade, but like I talked about in the intro there, that is why we have decided to do this. But uh, like usual, guys, we're going to kind of do this in the same review format that I do for most of books. It's just going to be a little different, obviously tweaked because we're not talking about a book. But I guess the best way to begin is talking about what is this release. Like I said, fifth generation of the Paper White. This one retails for $139. Uh, that is with ads. Those, of course, are US dollars. And $159 without. This is just the standard edition. You can get uh, pay a little more for the signature edition, which is $189. It has auto-adjusting light. It has 32 gigs of space, whereas this one only has eight. That one also has wireless charging whereas this one does not uh standard comes eight gigabyte they do not have a 32 gigabyte version of this one and they did with the last generation of paper white so it does not have those features listed so just in case you guys are looking for a lot of the stuff for the signature edition i'm only going to be reviewing this standard one here now let's begin guys uh like usual what makes it good or bad now the good here obviously is the processing speed upgrade this and this are the same speed now and I didn't think that that was going to happen. I did not think that they would, I feel like this is almost going to phase out the Oasis because of this reason. Because this is cheaper than the Oasis and it is every bit as fast, right? Uh, just as fast now, uses the same exact CPU 
as the Oasis, and it's very, very evident this thing is sleek, it is fast, it page turns just absolutely normally. I think even uh, reading like comics on here, it zooms and stuff a little faster than I think even the Oasis did. So that might be in my head there, it might just be because of the screen size, the screen direction, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I think this one is every bit as fast, it is just as good. And they finally eliminated the jank, guys. In my previous reviews, I talked about the jank. I think that was back in when I talked about the paper white six months later. I talked about that I still think that the problem with that was a lot of jank. That was the word that I came up with and just that it seemed like a little, almost kind of like the uh, the Barnes & Noble nook was when it first came out. Just everything just kind of slow to react and just kind of like, you know, you would flip like six or seven times and it wouldn't do anything and then all of a sudden we just go, Brr, you know, it was just on the new page. That kind of things like that. Gone. It's all gone. It's every bit as good, like I said now, as the Oasis. And this is the first Kindle, guys, to have the USB-C port. So if you're looking for that, say you got an Android phone, you want to use the same cable, you can do that now. Uh, it, obviously, it charges a lot faster as well. This has never been a big deal to me, guys, because I feel like you charge these things once. You ain't got to think about it again for a long, long time. So I've never really had a real big problem with, with how fast it charges. When I do have to charge it, literally, I think under an hour, it's back to 100%, even if it's even that long. I don't think it's even that long. But uh, again, that really, I guess, depends on you, what kind of brightness you're using, things like that. Uh, I read mostly in the complete dark. I don't wanna keep my wife up, so I never really keep it uh, very much uh, it, it, full brightness or anything like that. So I've never really had a, a real problem with that. A uh, new word that I learned for this is bezels. Now, I thought they were talking about Bezos, you know? <laughs> so bezels, I had no idea what a bezel was. Apparently, it's this nice little edge right here. Now they have made this a little slimmer. If you look at the old paper white, you can see that it is a little thicker there on the sides. And that's where the extra screen space comes about. And let's talk about that extra screen size now. Uh, 0.8 inches larger now diagonally. So uh, I, again, you can still hold it with one hand. I think that's what the important thing is here. But again, with me, the, uh, this, I love the idea of this still being able to fit in your pocket. So yes, they have made it larger but it can still fit in your pocket. And that is the biggest gripe I have about the Oasis is you can't fit it in your back pocket unless you're wearing like Jinko jeans or something like that. And who does that anymore? I don't know, but for all I know, those are coming back. It seems like everything comes in 30 year cycles. So it was the 80s last decade. So we're gonna start celebrating the 90s now. Let's bring back Jinkos. I think you hear about Jinkos on two uh, Kindle reviews in a row, did you? Uh, so the screen upset, uh, upgrade is obviously the big selling point here, but I think it's, uh, like I said, it's bigger, but it's still very comfortable to hold in one hand, you know, so you ain't got to worry about that. Uh, you ain't got to worry about having to balance it like you do with the Oasis. And again, if you want to take it, my wife was saying that she could uh, fit this in her, her purse with no problems at all, which is amazing because there's more. I think she's like Mary Poppins with that purse or a Time Lord that things just keep fitting in there. But with this, it just fits in there just fine. And she doesn't have any problems with that. But uh, I, I think that uh, this, this thing that they always advertise is glare free. It is glare free. I think that this is far better than this when it comes to the uh, the glare. I'm looking at both of them in the direct sunlight today, and I felt like it might have been in my head. It might have been in my head, but I felt like the new one, it is even better somehow. Now that also might be with the light upgrade. This has 17 LED lights now versus just four. Is it four or five? Four, I believe, with this last version. This is a, in case I didn't mention, this is a fourth generation. Uh, but I reviewed that on the channel. You can find it here. You can find the follow-up for it, all that stuff. That's where we started with Kindles, because that was my very first Kindle. But uh, I, again, you got the different colors of lights. And again, this makes it to where it, it can be very, very bright. The brightness levels on these. It makes this look like you're watching some old dingy 70s movie on 8mm film and this you're watching in a new 4K television. That's kind of how I feel about it because it's just so bright and it has the adjustable warm lighting now. I think that's the biggest new feature with this. That is something I never knew I needed until I got the Oasis. The Oasis, that warm lighting. As I talked so much in my very, very first Kindle video where I was making the switch from iPad, and the reason I was doing it was because of eye strain. And while the paper white, it, it made it a little better, still has some eye strain. When I switched to the Oasis, that warm lighting, poof, Ice train gone. Had no problems falling asleep ever. Because I think with this one, uh, with the paper white, I felt like uh, with the, just a regular white light, as you had where you would, you, your brain was still so stimulated after you finished reading. Even if you were tired, it still took you a little bit of fall asleep. Uh, Kindle Oasis, man, I barely closed that flap and I am asleep because that warm lighting is just so, so good. Now, 
Uh, this does not have the auto brightness. We'll talk about that here in a minute here. But adjustable uh, warm lighting, you can set it on timers and things like that. Like if you want to certain, like you would say, I want the warm lighting to happen between you know 9 and 10 p.m. when I'm reading in bed or something. You can set to do that. And it will remember to auto do that, almost like an iPhone or an Android will, anything like that. So manually adjusting the two times of day, no matter what color you want it to be. Well, not well, what color. You got warm light, you got regular light. You know, I don't want to, I want to be like, hey, I thought I wanted like red light. I didn't know I had that, but why would you want to read in red light anyway? But uh, it does have the night mode and all that stuff. Same features, really not a lot of change there that I feel like I need to talk about. Uh, the charge time is obviously another big selling point. Uh, this one boasts up to 10 weeks without a new charge, whereas this one was six weeks without a new charge. And with that, again, it just depends on how much you read. Because, uh, I mean, sure, you read like 10 minutes a day. Yeah, I'm sure it could last for 10 weeks. If you read three hours a day, I'm not sure it's going to last three weeks. But again, I've never felt like battery life was a problem with any of these Kindles, really. Just depending on how often you want to charge. Uh, again, now they have the convenience of uh, yeah, that you don't have to go and get a special cable for this. You most likely already have the USB-C cable in your house. You can probably find something to charge it with. It does come with one. It doesn't come with a wall outlet, though. I, I still don't get that guy. Jeff, you are charging this much for these things. Give people a wall plug. Jesus, come on. Uh, but uh, that's just a minor gripe there. But again, the, the, the amount of charge time, it's just going to kind of depend on you, how much you use, what brightness you use, things like that. Uh, these are still waterproof for up to 30 minutes. I'm not brave enough to try this. But if you are brave enough to try it, and you say you're reading in the bathtub and you drop it, you get it out, you're going to be fine. Towel it off, you'll be fine. Uh, you're just reading it in the swimming pool, uh, okay, be careful. But if you do drop it, you'll be fine. I'm not thinking that you should go snorkeling while reading this. But again, it's your life. Do what you want to do, right? So uh, I think with this one, like I said, it's equal to the Oasis in reducing eye strain. I think that's a huge, huge deal. It has the same Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, if you want to do this for Audible, things like that, that they I think they are doing the free trial with the Audible Unlimited on here. If you buy it new, it really depends on what offer you get. But uh, that's what we got on this one. I, me and my wife, neither one of us really are audiobook people, so we're not really doing that. But the connectivity was instant. It wasn't no big deal trying to pair to this. Not that it was with the other one either. But I do want to mention that Bluetooth connectivity, and uh, that's most of the good things. Now, what are the bad things you ask? Now. Bads, these are going to be kind of subjective. These are some things that maybe would annoy you. Maybe they got to me. I'm not really sure because uh, I'm not going to be reading this one. I'm going to use my Oasis. But uh, there is no more mobile support. It is Wi-Fi only. So I don't know if that matters to you or not. But it is something that I felt like I need to bring up. I'm never really in a place where I need to... Uh, I have this somewhere and I need to buy a book because I don't have a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, I, I'm fine. I've got enough stuff to read on there that I can wait till I get back into a place with a Wi-Fi connection to buy something if I really, really need it. But if that matters to you, you travel a lot, that might be something you want to consider. Uh, the wireless charging being only for the uh, signature edition of this, I think that's kind of... Sh uh. I don't know. I, I, I guess that you want to make it worth people who want to buy that more expensive edition. But that one just seems like you almost had to go out of your way to make that a difference there. Uh, but again, uh, wireless charging, uh, your USB-C, I, I don't think either one's really a problem. But again, these things always really matter uh, to the individual more so than just myself. Uh, only being available in 8 gigabyte, it can be annoying if you are an audiobooker because, look, I've got an uh, 8 gigabyte on my Oasis and I think that I have like almost 6,000 books on there and I'm not even like two gigs in. So if you don't put audiobooks on here, eight gigabytes is gonna be plenty for you. But if you want 32, you have to pay for that signature edition because the standard one does not have that option. And the power button is still on the bottom and this drives me nuts. Now there's a lot of people in my previous video I said that's not that big a deal if you're like you read in bed you put it on your chest sometimes you're going to hit that button more often than like the oasis which smartly puts the power button back on the top because who's reading their book like this upside down right so that might be something that bothers you might be something that doesn't it drives me crazy i don't know why that's like the one holdover because i've seen many people complain about that feature and it is still here guys so uh that's going to be one that might get to you still some problems with side loading on these suckers with it crushing your uh, your custom cover art if you're using custom cover art if you're using caliber or something like that to sideload 
books. And if you don't know what that means, that means buying, getting books that you do not have uh, from straight from Amazon. You're wanting to say you've got like me, where you're trying to migrate everything from your iPad over when you first get it. It, it it's a real, real. Here's my thing with my Oasis. I keep it in airplane mode now. Because when I take it out of airplane mode, it, whatever I'm reading, it takes the cover art off of the book. And it's just annoying. It's one of those things you're like, hey, who cares? The book's still fine. Uh, if you're OCD, it matters. It, it matters quite a bit. You like all your stuff to look uniform, all your stuff to look nice. Everything looks the same size. And then it just takes your cover art away. It's annoying. There's apparently lots of workarounds around this, stuff like this. But it seems like every single time they find a workaround with it in Caliber, Amazon does some update and boom, it's still a problem. So that might still be driving you crazy. Now let's talk about price. I think this is gonna be the biggest bad one here for you. If you have this one and you're looking to just upgrade to this one, I think $140 for just an upgrade, that might be kind of tough to swallow. Now, if you don't have a Kindle yet at all, I think this is a fair price. It is an amazing device. I think you're gonna be quite, quite happy with it, but just for an upgrade, that's gonna be a little tough for you, especially if you get into that signature edition and you're pushing $200. But the cool thing about that signature edition though is it was $189, but it does not have ads on it. You do not have to pay to have the ads removed. Uh, the, the biggest thing about charging the $20 to remove ads about this, the secret that I tell everybody is if you buy a lot of stuff off Amazon, let's be honest, just about every one of us do. If you call them and you say, hey, I spend thousands of dollars here every year, would you remove the ads from my Kindle? Uh, with me and the Oasis, they did didn't charge me anything. So it's worth a shot, right? Uh, if you decide not to do that, guys, I'm not going to lie. The ads aren't that big a deal. It's just when your, your screen is turned off, it has an ad. There's no pop-ups. There's nothing like while you're reading your book that's going to change your reading experience whatsoever. So to me, it's not that big of a deal. But again, I start to say, if you're paying this much for a device, hey, well, it's 20 more dollars, right? But again, if you're really, really scraping together to, to buy this, saving up for it, yeah, who wants to pay another twenty dollars to have those ads removed? So I'm saying, if you don't have them removed, it's not the end of the world. But I also think that uh, if you do, just try. Just give them a call and give them a call. You can message them on their customer support line. They'll probably do it. Uh, it's, it's not really seem to be a big deal. The biggest thing for me, guys, is still no color. And I know that some people don't find this a big deal. Uh, it would be so nice to uh, to to have to, the option to read your comics or manga on here if you do that on this device to have them in color, even though I know most manga is in black and white, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, it'd be nice to see your cover art in color and things like that. If there's an illustrated edition of a book, it would be nice to have it in color. And uh, I think that that's just, it's going to happen inevitably. Uh, but again, it's really kind of hard to put that as a bad because they never really said this was going to have color or anything. I just felt like they would have got there uh, eventually, but they haven't yet. So that kind of leads us to, is this worth the upgrade guys for $139? I think this might just be in the sweet spot for Kindle users because this isn't the Paperwhite in a bigger package. This is the Kindle Oasis in a slimmer package. It is just as much a beast as my Oasis is with a couple things like the adjustable warm light. Uh, with, with mine, it's auto. You do not get auto brightness on this. And I said with the Oasis, my favorite thing about it was that that auto brightness finally works. It finally works right. No matter what lighting you're in, it adjusts perfectly. And that's something that I've become really dependent upon. And this not having that, you can only get that on the Signature Edition. That's something I'm really going to say is a knock against. But other than that, this is a monster. This is absolutely, I think this is going to phase out the Oasis, actually. And I think the reason is because this is $139. The Oasis is still like, what, $250, $300? Is it really worth that much more to have just a little bit bigger of a screen? I don't think so. Not when the speed is exactly the same now and it has a lot of the same features. It has the same lighting now. So I don't know if this means they've got some uh, special Oasis that's coming out next year or if they just plan to do like they did. Uh, like they, uh, what's it called? The Voyage? I can't remember what it was called anymore. But uh, yeah, I think they might just be phasing it out. I'm not sure. Uh, it might be because they're clearing the decks for the uh, for the Kindle Color. See, my thing is, I think the Kindle Color is inevitable. It's going to happen eventually. My opinion is they will put out one more version of the Oasis next year with maybe some faster speed, some brighter colors, some things like that. Who knows? Maybe they even tease and do a little bit of, okay, well, your cover art can be in color, but nothing else. Who knows? Maybe. 
maybe. And then I think 2023, we're gonna see that inevitable release of the Kindle Color. I think this is every bit as good as the Oasis, except no buttons, no live buttons on here. You still have to do this. You don't have the live buttons on the side. I don't think that that and the auto brightness is enough to justify the difference in cost. So again, if you're looking to get your first Kindle, I think this is a perfect, perfect starting place because we don't have the technological achievements that the Oasis had kind of restricted from you anymore. You have those with this edition. So uh, I think that for the price difference, this is probably the way to go. If you're looking just to upgrade from this one, I think if you can afford it, yeah, it's worth it. It, it is worth it. But again, if you think $140 is just a bit much uh, just to upgrade, eh, maybe hold off and see what uh, what's going to happen on Black. If I'm if I'm right and they're going to phase out the Oasis, I'd watch out on Black Friday. You might see some flash sales on Amazon for the Oasis. And so I mean, look, I have the Oasis. I'm happy with it. I'm not going to get this one to replace it. I'm fine with that. I'm glad my wife is on the same uh, reading power level with this device now as I am with the Oasis. But uh, again, if you only have a Paperwhite 4, I think this is definitely the way to go. 100% worth the money if you have it. And guys, that is the new Kindle Paperwhite. I read Life of Pi on it for about two hours earlier, and it was after what, for a while. I was like, look, I, I'm not going to lie. I miss reading with just one hand because uh, look, the Oasis, you can, but it doesn't really feel comfortable. After a while, you start being like, okay, I'm just going to kind of balance it like this. That's what the groove is for and things like that. So it may not be that big a deal to other people, but this, I just, I always loved just reading it like this. That's the biggest thing I missed about the paper white and using it today made me realize how much I do miss that. So I don't think if you have an Oasis that you should just go get this one because it's just as fast now. If you're happy with your Oasis, you're fine. You're fine. If you have a paper white four and you're just looking to have a faster device, you like the size, you don't need a bigger screen or the live buttons of an Oasis. That's definitely the way to go. Guys for 139, I think it can't be beat. And, uh, that's it, guys. That's it for another new Kindle. Uh, I will be talking one more time about Kindle before the end of the year. I have so many people now. There's so many different versions of Kindle out now. Everybody asking, which one should I choose? Well, I'll be doing that before Black Friday. I'll be doing a video on what Kindle I think is best for you. And that will kind of wrap up Kindle Talk, I believe, until the inevitable release of the Kindle Color. Or who knows? Maybe I switch to Kobo one day. We never know. We never know. So uh, if you work for Kobo and you want to send me one to review for you, I won't mind doing so guys drop in the comments let me know what you think about the new kindle are you interested do you think it's worth the money i will talk to you guys there enjoy your reading mm -hmm.